Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is How to Make an RPG in Unity, and welcome to episode 15. So this time we are going to continue looking at our spider, working with some pre-built animations that come with the spider. We'll look at some more coding, and we'll also look at implementing an experience system, which is vital to any RPG game. So let's take a look at our spider firstly. I think I want to increase the size of this spider enemy cube just a little bit just so we kind of cover the spider a tad more. So the idea of what's going to happen here is we need to attach the spider itself to the spider enemy. But before we do that, let's sort out our animator component because we don't need an animator. We need animation because we want to be able to control the animations like we do with the sword. So right click, remove component, add component, animation. So there are a couple of animations that we need to add to the spider itself. So if we go to the spider folder, if I can find him, he's here. So first one we're going to do is idle. And then we need to change the size to five because we have five different animations. So the second one will be attack and then die and then jump and then walk will be the last one. So you may want to go on to die and just check that the wrap mode is set as once because obviously we only want the spider to die once. It can't die again and again and again unless you're creating that style of thing, but we need to go for once. So the idea of what's going to happen here is we're going to be working with the spider enemy script and at the moment when it dies, the cube disappears. So if we attach the spider to the spider enemy, so it acts as one entire object now, it would destroy everything, it would just make it disappear. And we need to work around that to make it actually just play its death animation. So to do that, what we need to do is public game object, and we'll call it the spider semicolon. Next, we'll also do public int and have spider status semicolon. So instead of having the uh, death animation, uh, sorry, the destroy, we need to have the death animation. And we can do that real simply by going the spider dot get component. And in spiky brackets, we need animation and open close bracket dot play. And in quotes and brackets, we need to play whatever we have these actually call as. So if you're using a different model, you have different animation names. Remember, you need to put the exact animation name in this place. In this case, for me, it's die. So die, quote, close bracket, semicolon. Now, at this point, what's going to happen is the death animation is going to play over and over and over. So realistically, what we need to do is we need to, before the start code routine, we need to, need to set the spider status as something different. So if, or rather we need to check that it is the right status and then we can change it later on. So if spider status equals zero, which it currently is, but we may change that in future because the spider is going to have at least five different statuses. So it's going to have its walking, its idle, its jumping, dead, completely dead, kind of, all different statuses that we can work with later on. So if the spider status is equal to zero, then we start this co-routine. So close curly bracket. And what we do now is as soon as the enumerator death spider starts, we need to change the spider status to, let's say, six. So for internal points of view, the number six represents that the spider is dead. So if we save that script now, head back to Unity, and we'll need to reference the spider here. So it's the actual spider, not the spider enemy object, onto the variable. And let's turn off that mesh renderer because we don't want to be cute. We want to be able to see the spider doing spidery things. So let's head all the way over here. And let's attempt to kill our spider. There we go. So one thing I noticed there is the spider delays a little bit on its death. So I think we can probably get rid of this wait for seconds here. We don't really need it, do we? Let's try again. Let's just 
see what we can do. This kind of thing in Unity is vital, working around things, getting things just right, because just think how long it takes to make some of these games that are out on the market. So much time is used just playing little things like this in games. So our spider's been hit once, I've hit him again. There we go. So you can always get your timing just right. It, it depends on what you want to do with it. So obviously, our spider is now dead. Where's our experience? Let's sort ourselves out with some experience, shall we? So in our scripts folder, let's right click, create a new folder, and let's have this just called experience. So the experience itself is going to be, for now, it's just going to be a simple um, script, which is just going to be called, let's call it global XP. And in here for now, it's going to be quite small, but gradually as we go over time and refine the game itself, we're going to need a lot more within this script. So let's get rid of any notes and avoid start because we don't need them. And what we'll have is public static int, and let's call it um, current XP. And then another one, public int because we need to see in the inspector panel i always like to do that so i can check what's going on real time so public int internal xp semicolon and in void update it will be internal xp equals current xp semicolon and save so you probably guessed at this point that we're going to have to reference that global XP script in our death spider script. And what we can do is as soon as we set the spider status to six, we will do global XP dot current XP plus equals. And now what we do is completely dependent on where we intend to go with the game. How much experience do we want to give? Do we always want to give a constant amount of experience or do we want to give a varying amount of experience based on our level? So at this point, what I'm going to do is just put 10 for now and save that script, but I'm actually going to create a global level script. So this is where levels come into games. So right click, create C sharp script and let's have it as global level. So what I think I'd like to do here is pretty much the same as what we've got for our global XP. So I'm going to copy all this here, paste it into the class and just change. So current level and internal level. So this is where a lot of math comes into it. So current, um, sorry, internal level is equal to current level. Yeah, as I was saying, this is where maths comes into it now, or math, or however you want to say it, it makes no difference. Calculations, we'll call it. So the XP, I think, is going to be based on your level. So let's save that level script. And what we'll do is we'll add in another game object. Create empty and we'll call this level XP object. So both of these scripts are going to be attached to there. So global level, global XP. And going back to our spider enemy, although we've got 10, what we'll do is we will generate a value of base experience that this spider is going to be worth. So public int base xp and we'll make the base xp of the spider equal to 10. So after that we'll do an extra little um, variable so public int and we'll have calculated xp semicolon and the calculated xp is going to be worked out using um, the global level and the global XP and adding it to the global XP. So what we need to do is in, uh, in fact, we'll do it after spider status game. What we'll do is 
calculated XP is going to be equal to base XP multiplied by our current level. So here it will be uh, global level dot current level. So global level dot current level semicolon and we then need to make global XP dot current XP e uh, plus equals calculated XP and save that script. Now for those of you who are wondering currently our level would be zero so obviously we're going to get zero XP from this spider. So what I would recommend we do is current level equals one and save. So if we head back to our level XP object, we should be able to see here that when we press play, we should be able to see our level is internal level one. And when we go over to our spider, we should be able to see that when we kill it, we get 10 experience from it. Let's try it. One slice, two slice. So there we go, 10 experience. So obviously if our level was, let's say, 3, we would logically get 30 experience. Because when you start leveling up in an RPG game, obviously the, the amount of experience you earn becomes greater and greater. Unless you're creating something like Final Fantasy VIII, which was a thousand experience for each level. But most RPG games don't follow that kind of script. So now we get 30 experience. So you can see our experience system is coming together in a way which is quite handy for us because it allows us to now work with multiplication. For example, our value of attacking can change based on our level. And that's probably something we'll do in the next episode. So I like how this is coming along now because I think the next episode we're going to look at getting this spider to have a little bit more of a brain rather than just sitting there and taking the sword swings. So I think we'll start looking at a little bit of uh, simple AI. We'll look at uh, an NPC and a little bit more interaction with the game itself because as you can imagine, it's starting to come along quite nicely and I like the direction of where this is going. And to be honest, I'd like to see the direction of your RPG games as well. So if you've got anything in the making, please let me know, share a link in the comments and we can all have a look. So guys, until the next episode, thank you very much for watching.